Okay, so I know I said I would do a video about dimensions this week, but I actually don't want to do that. I changed my mind. I'll tell you why. First of all, gotta save some stuff for the book. When I told them I was doing a YouTube series, my editor was like, you gotta make sure they still buy the book. So, you know, buy the book. But also because after what we did last week, I kind of want to cool off for a bit. I want to do a math meditation. And what that is is something I like to do with students where it's just something that keeps your mind working in a kind of like mathematical, precise, organized way, but it's also just relaxing. It's a good way to cool off after you've done some like harder math that makes you think in sort of like a sharp, direct way. You know, it's like, stretching after you play basketball. It's just a good way to sort of keep your muscles moving, keep the blood flowing, but also just take a breather. So today's math meditation, we're gonna do some origami. Origami is very mathematical. I actually had a teacher once who proved some theorems about origami. We're not even gonna be doing that kind of origami math. I'm literally just gonna show you how to do some origami. I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. And so what I want you to do is get a piece of paper. I'm not doing this by myself. You have to actually follow along. Please get a piece of paper, any kind of piece of paper, eight and a half by 11, and just try to follow along with what I'm doing. Try to do all the same folds that I'm doing in exactly the same way that I'm doing. And I promise you by the end, you'll have a really nice paper bird that you can show off to all of your friends. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to turn this piece of paper into a square. Origami always starts with a square piece of paper. This is actually sort of going to be the first test of how precise and nice your folds can be because we need a real exact square piece of paper. So what we're going to do is you're going to fold this piece of paper. Don't do any, when you're folding, don't start folding right away. Make sure you get it all lined up perfectly before you do. And what I want you to do is just make this sort of perfect little like 45 degree triangle here and make sure this corner over here is a sharp corner without any extra space in there. And when you have this top edge totally lined up, that's when you start pressing down and working your way down this fold like that. Okay, so once we have this, now you notice that this side of the paper, this is the square that we're gonna be using and this part we're gonna wanna cut off. And the way you do that, you're not supposed to use scissors in origami, so here's what we're gonna do instead. Fold this piece over exactly to where that fold was, exactly where the end of that piece of paper is. And again, make sure you're trying to be like very neat and precise here. You don't want any mess ups at this early stage because if you have something go wrong at this stage in the process, it's just gonna compound down the line. So once you have that first fold, now we can sort of unfold this. And you see this is the square we're going to have. We need to get rid of this piece. So take this fold and we're going to do this a few times. You're going to fold back the other direction. And now if you have nails, this is a really nice time to just sort of like crease it really hard like that, you know. And we're gonna fold it back and forth. We're gonna fold it the other way again. And we're just trying to weaken this fault line here. We're trying to make it as, as weak as possible, really just sort of like press into it. I'm gonna do maybe one more time. And you should feel it starts getting really flimsy. It kind of feels like this piece of paper wants to come off. Okay, and now once we're ready, once we have like a really flimsy piece of paper here, you can start to tear a little bit here at the top and be careful here, we don't wanna mess up. We don't want any little pieces missing. And once you have that little rip, just sort of like pull it apart like that. If you mess up at any point, that's, don't worry about that. Just sort of get a new piece of paper and start over. I promise if you try this a few times, you can get it really nice. Okay, so here we are with our square piece of paper and it's time to start the actual making of the bird. And the first thing we're gonna do, make sure that your square piece of paper, this fold that we've already created, make sure it's sort of facing up like a mountain and not down like a valley. We want it pointed up like this. So flip your paper over if you need to. And now we're gonna make two creases, one straight down this way and one this way. So just fold this piece of paper over side to side like that. So you get that nice line down the middle and crease it again if you can't you know always line up the edge here before you start folding anything make sure these edges line up really nicely and then you can press down and make that fold and now unfold it you see we got our nice 
vertical line. Now we're just going to do the same thing and get a horizontal line. So you fold it to the top. Make sure before you press anything down here, make sure you're getting those edges at the top lined up. And then press down across. Beautiful. All right. So now we have this nice sort of three-folded piece of paper. And I want you to turn it like this so that the diagonal fold is running across. And now we're going to do, this is the hardest part of the entire bird, so if you get past this part, the rest is going to be easy, smooth sailing. So here's what we're going to do. This is kind of like a 3D fold here. Watch what I do. We're going to sort of fold both of these sides in. See how that's happening? Fold these sides in to the middle, and then this will come down like that. So I can do that again if you want to see that happen again. It's kind of almost like a fortune teller kind of thing here. We're folding these sides in down to the middle. And then we have a nice square. So make sure that the open part of the square is down here at the bottom. That's going to be important later. All right. So if we got to the square, here's what happens next. We're going to take there's two flaps on the side. We're going to fold one flap over and then fold it back. We just need that line down the middle. Okay, so now here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fold this edge here into this middle part. So we're gonna have, create a crease like right there. So we're gonna fold it across like that. Do you see how that happens? And again, make sure that this line is going all the way top to bottom. See, I messed up a little bit. There's already some errors here, but that's okay. As long as it stays relatively nice, we're gonna have a nice bird at the end. And then you can fold that down into a crease. Do the same thing on the other side coming in. We're sort of making this like ice cream cone shape. Okay. And now we're going to take this and flip it over. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Oh no, I've got a little color there. All right. So we're going to fold down the middle and fold it back. Remember, it's going to be a little different this time because the back side is already folded. And same thing again, we're sort of going to fold this edge here onto this edge. Feel free to pause the video at any time or go back if you need to to see what I'm doing. And same thing over here. Okay, and the last fold we're gonna do right here is we're gonna take this top triangle bit and we're gonna fold it down across this horizontal line that we've created with the folds here. So just straight down like that. All right, now we're gonna open those all up. I know there's a lot of folding and unfolding in origami. A lot of it is just about creasing the paper and sort of making these fault lines that we can do stuff with. So now here's the next kind of tricky step. We have this sort of nice triangle here, and we're going to take one flap of paper, this very thin top flap of paper here at the bottom, and we're going to fold it up across this line. And you'll see what happens as we start to do that. The sides will start to fold in, and we're going to let them do that. We're going to let them make sure we're going exactly on this line that we just created here. And as the sides start to fold in, Make sure you're guiding them so that it's a nice fold. And it's gonna sort of collapse down into this diamond shape. That one's also kind of tricky, so take your time with it, don't rush it. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna fold this flap down the other way, just so that's easier to fold. You don't really need to do that step, but it makes it easier. Unfold so we have this same triangle, and then once again, open the flap up, and as everything folds in, make sure it's getting to be this nice diamond shape. All right, this is called the bird base. There's a couple different birds you can make from here. It sort of has this little flappy leg thing at the bottom. Um, we're going to make the peace crane. This is really the only thing I know how to do in origami, so I just do it over and over again. Okay, and so we're going to do first, we're going to need to make the these leg things here. This is going to be sort of the neck and the tail. We need to make them more thin and slender. So we're just going to fold it over. Just take this top flap, not both the flaps, just the top flap. 
and we're going to fold it in the same way where this edge here is going to end up on this edge here. So we're going to create sort of a line down the middle like that. So watch what happens. We just sort of go like this, edge directly to the edge. And again, don't fold anything. It's harder now that it's so small, but don't fold anything until you have the point at the bottom really nice and precise there. So we have, oh, see I messed up a little bit. Let me redo that. Not very good enough for science. Okay, and we're gonna do that four more times, uh, three more times. So this side and then both of the other sides. So just follow along. The feeling of doing origami, of watching someone else following someone else doing origami is really very similar to what it feels like to be in uh, an advanced math class, an abstract math class. You're just sort of watching someone do something that's very orderly and precise and you're just trying to copy along and do the same thing and make sure you follow along all the steps. So I usually find that my students who like origami, who like doing origami and get really into it and sort of like making these sharp angles like that, tend to also be really good at math. And it's usually not even the people who think they're good at math, because I'm not talking about like arithmetic or anything like that. I'm talking about sort of the more conceptual thinky parts of it. But anyway, now here we are. We have the same bird base with the two like leg things here, but now it's way more slender and we're really almost done. I know it doesn't look like this is a bird yet, but we're very close to this being a completed piece crane. So now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this side, I'm gonna fold it up and at this point, it actually doesn't matter exactly how you fold it up. It's going to depend whether it's sort of a forward-leaning bird or sort of an uptight bird. But I like to do it exactly along this line here to sort of line up the line to the line. Like that. And this is going to be important. You want to make sure that you crease this as much as you can right here. It's really fat, so it's going to be kind of hard to crease. But, you know, it's worth it. See, this is already getting a little messy, but it is what it is. Okay. Now, this is kind of another, this is the last tricky part that we have to do. What we're gonna do is, this is not, you know, the bird doesn't wanna have its neck sort of falling off the side here. We want the neck to be inside here. So we're gonna do what's called an inside-outside fold. I think that's what it's called, I don't really remember. We're gonna take this back down and we're gonna use this crease to sort of make the same fold, but on the inside. You see what's happening there? So this, oops, oh man. So this was the original fold. And now we're gonna sort of open up this side and do the same fold down the middle like that and then fold it back over. That is probably actually, I lied before, I think that might be the trickiest part. But you see what happened there? The fold isn't on the top and it isn't on the bottom, it's sort of right on the inside there. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So fold it up, get that crease real nice. Fold it back down, open it up through the middle and close it out. Okay, we got basically one or two more steps. So just making sure this looks nice. You can always sort of go back and do some surgery and treat the bird, make it a little nicer. So here we are, we're basically done. Now you have two sides here and it's up to you now to decide which is gonna be a head and which is gonna be the tail. I generally like to make the uglier side the head and you'll see why in a second. So for mine, this side looks pretty nice. This one's a little messy. I'm gonna make this the head. And so what you do to make the head is you just fold it over into like a little beak, something like that. But again, we don't want the beak flopping on one side. We wanna do this inside outside fold again. So we're gonna open this up and ugh, if you did a messy job like I did, this is gonna be sort of approximate. But so you open it up, fold it down through the middle, and then you sort of try to close it up again. Again, you can rough it a little bit, no one's gonna notice. And so there is the head and beak of the bird, and now here's the fun part. Open it up, take the two wings, and pull them out, and there you have a nice little bird. Uh, if you want, you can do an extra fun step and if you turn it around, there's gonna be this hole at the bottom and you can blow into it. And 
and that sort of fills up its back like that. Again, you know, it's kind of rough, but I can show you from another angle. And that's pretty much it. That's our math meditation for today. I hope you have something kind of like this bird now. Uh, if you don't, I would say just start over and do it again. There's really, you know, if you have the time, there's, there's no reason not to try this a couple times. It gets better every time. And if you felt like this was really easy for you and you want more of a challenge, well, you can take this leftover slip of paper that we have and you can do it again with a really, really small square. That's actually something that's really fun. I like trying to see how tiny of a piece crane I can possibly make. Also, I want to see your birds, so if you did follow along, please take a picture and post them in the comments. I want to see what you guys did. I know I haven't been responding to the comments, but I'm actually saving them up. I'm going to do a whole episode where I just respond to everyone's questions. So anyone who asked a question in the comments right now, so far we've only gotten like three or four questions total. So that's great. I'm going to be able to answer anything. That's it for this week. I'll be back with some more Math Without Numbers next week. Remember, of course, to pre-order the book, subscribe, post notifications, give it a like if you want to. What else was I supposed to say? New videos every Tuesday. See you next week.